Welcome to the Unity Certified Expert Programmer Exam Item Walkthrough. My name is Carlos and I'm going to walk you through a couple of items similar to those you will find on the exam. I'll explain the rationale and talk process you will use to answer the questions. In most items, we will usually start with a scenario. Read this scenario carefully, paying attention to details. This one describes a platformer game and gives you details about it. In a platformer game where you can select four different characters to play, the distance between the character and the floor when jumping needs to be measured the same way in all characters. The characters should be able to be set up and tuned individually on the inspector by the game designer. Then read and understand the specific question you are being asked. Which of the following methods should the programmer implement using best practices? Next. Carefully read each answer, thinking about the details in the scenario, determine for each option if it correctly answers the specific question being asked. Answer A here says, create a base class with the behavior and inherit from it on each of the character's behavior script. You can accomplish the behavior with this approach, but it's not actually using Unity's best practices. This method creates a more strict and less flexible architecture when compared with composition, which is preferable for specialized behaviors like a ground check. V says, create an interface to create a specific implementation for each character. The scenario states that you need to determine a single implementation for all the characters, so this cannot be the correct answer. Answer C says, Create different ground check implementations on each character script to achieve personalized behavior. This approach will also work, but the question is not asking for a personalized behavior. Answer D says, create a component that deals only with the ground check task and use it on all characters, which is actually the correct answer here. We can follow this approach to measure the distance between the character and the floor and the same component can be applied to each character. This answer uses best practices for a component-oriented environment like Unity. As you can see in this simple example, you need to not only be able to solve a problem, but to really pay attention to the details described in each item to be able to identify the correct answer using your knowledge and experience as a Unity programmer. Now let's take a look at a different type of item. On the exam, you will also see scenarios related to more than one item. In this example, you can see a reading passage with a scenario. A design document requests a project of an educational platform. This project includes four mini games that will help facilitate the user learning subjects such as mathematics and physics. It is a project with an extensive development time of four months during which the programmer must contemplate a home screen from where the minigames will be launched. Each game must inform their results, which can be consulted later on the home screen within a learning report. This is a multi-platform project targeting iOS and Android phones and tablets. The users must be able to create an account that will allow them to change to a different device without losing their progress. All four minigames must be simple games and must emulate popular mechanics among casual gamers. All games will use touch inputs to play and all need to be available at launch. The development team will consist of two programmers and the art team working full time. And here we have two questions based on that information. The first one asks, which loading system will have the best memory usage? Answer A. A scene for each of the minigames that gets loaded from a main menu scene. Since we are asking for an approach that better uses memory, this will be the best given that the project will only load the assets for a single scene at a time. Now let's analyze the other three answers. Answer B. A main menu scene that loads and unloads a prefab containing each minigame. For this one, in order to be able to instantiate a minigame prefab, we need a reference inside the main scene, which means all the assets from all minigames are going to be loaded in memory as soon as we open the main scene, even if they are never instantiated. This is not optimal memory usage. Answer C, a main menu scene that additively loads minigame scenes. 
This is also going to waste some memory since even if we are playing a minigame, the main scene continues to be loaded all the time. And answer D. A based empty scene that additively loads all game scenes. Well, even if the master scene is tiny, still is going to use some extra memory and according to the scenario, memory is limited and we are looking for the approach that best makes use of it. Now that we have eliminated options B, C and D, we can confirm that A is the correct answer. Using this same scenario, let's take a look at a different question. Which of the following tasks needs to be made first? The first thing to notice here is that this question is based on the same reading passage but is actually from a different topic. This is more of a development pipeline type of question. You will find scenarios like this on the exam. To answer this question, we need a different approach since all these tasks will be made for the project, but we need to find which one has to be made first. Now let's review the options we have. Answer A says, mini game development. Although starting to code mechanics right at the beginning of a project is really fun, there is some consideration we have to take into account first. If we start with game programming, we might have to do some rework later in the development process which wastes valuable resources. Answer B. Network code for an account creation. Often, online interaction can dictate how the flow of the game works and is very important to deal with this type of task early on the development process. But before we actually need to know how the systems we are going to use to complete these tasks work. Answer C. Task backlog. Well, before we actually start doing any task on the project, it's a great idea to create a task backlog. This will provide a clear development path for the team, but we cannot create this out of nothing. Before, we need to gather valuable information about needs, features, potential problems, and limitations the project might encounter. This is why we first need to create what Answer D states, a technical design document. This document, along with the design document, will provide the necessary information to start creating a list of tasks needed to build all the features the project will have. Hello, my name is Ariel, and I'm going to help you go through this sample item that's similar to the items that we're going to find in the test. The item reads as following. In a first-person shooter game, the player is a sniper who hunts enemy combatants. The player presses the appropriate button to lock down the rifle scope in a zoom in and precise view of the target. The game also slows down the time when the player is looking through the scope. This feature must be implemented causing the least impact on the rest of the completed features. What should the programmer do to implement this feature? So reading each of the items, we're gonna figure out which one is the right one based on the scenario. The scenario contains enough information for you to make a clear-cut decision on which one is the right one. Starting with A, we have Use a second camera that's closer to the target and reduce the animator speed. This is not gonna be good enough for our project since reducing animator speed doesn't impact the rest of the game. Letter B, attach animator speeds of the games to a variable that matches the field of view and change the field of view. This also is not gonna work since changing the animator speeds for any other reason will have an impact on the camera and this is not a correct behavior for the camera. Letter C. Use a second camera and change the scene with a custom animator time and zoom. So using a second scene might be a source of bugs since we're duplicating all the assets and creating new logic on a separate scene. This could work but let's keep reading to see if we find a better solution. Letter D. Reduce the time scale and swap to a second camera on the weapon with a narrow field of view. This one is perfect, since we're changing the time scale, which is gonna affect all the game, and we're swapping to a second camera, which we have total control, and we control the field of view to make a zoom. For that reason, this should be the correct answer. This is an example of the talk process you can expect to use to answer questions on the Unity Certified Expert Programmer Certification exam. I hope this helps you get a better idea of what you will find inside the exam. I wish you the best of luck and thanks for watching this video.